Welcome to the People Leaders Podcast, the audio resource for managers and business leaders creating high-performing teams. Join leadership and team development experts Jan and Michelle Turkelson each week as they explore both subjects from every angle. Through practical tips, valuable insights, and compelling interviews with leadership experts around the world, you'll learn how to bring out the best in your staff and how to give your best as a leader. Hello. Hello. So this episode, we are going to step people through team-based planning. And in our previous episode, we talked about the benefits. So the team has some clarity. They have a focus for, you know, the next six to 12 months. And it is something that the people manager, their team, maybe a stakeholder, partnerships, external contractors can come in to this process as well. So that's the the who, what, um, when you would do it beginning of the year or any time during the year just to kind of refresh and refocus. And now we're going to step you through those elements yeah. of the team-based so, so it's almost like these are the 10 steps that you would take in order to create a team-based plan. And in terms of duration, we said it could be, and really it depends on the size of the team. Mm. You know, if you've got a team of 50, it, we are we would do it differently. Um, slight, well, yeah, slightly differently, divide and conquer really, uh, as opposed to a team of five people. Mm. So what we'll do is we'll step people through the you know maybe the 10 key steps of creating a team-based plan step one step one situation analysis it sounds heavy doesn't it but a situation analysis is really just providing context so that everybody starts on the same page what's been happening in the team what has brought us to this place in time these are really just that we're laying the foundations You don't have to put this in the plan, but just put it on, put it up somewhere so everybody agrees, yeah, this is what's been happening in the organisation, in our team, in the environment that has led us to where we are right now. Yeah. And I I think also you could actually put a blue sky vision in. So this is where I would like to see the team. So there's a little bit of aspiration in your in your context as well. Yeah. Because if you want to stretch your team Mm. to a place that they haven't been before or creating mm. something new, you actually have to imagine that mm. newness. And a, and a nice little tool we like to use is the, the target where you just draw a circle on the board and in the middle of that circle you put you put success and outside the circle you put non-success. Mm. So what does success look like for us? And everybody gets to put a word in the success circle and then outside the circle what success doesn't look like. Mm. And, for example, you know, non-success could look like there's bickering and infighting within the team. We're not sharing resources, but success looks like everybody's kicking goals, we're getting great feedback from our stakeholders. Yeah, so and fewer emails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meetings, yeah. yeah. So, so providing situational context as well as a bit of aspiration so that situation analysis step one Mm -hmm. step two yeah start to create the plan by um developing tried and trusted tested um uh process which we really like is the SWOT analysis what are the strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats for the team so what are the strengths for us as a team what are the weaknesses uh, for us as a team. So that's internal. Internal. And then opportunities and threats tend to be external to the team. And the thing that we would always uh, encourage people to do is, you know, complete the so what factor because a lot of teams say, oh, yeah, we're highly skilled, but what's what? so what? Yeah. You know, what is the implication yeah. or the impact of having that strength? That's right. So are there certain people that really rely on us and that we can leverage from, et cetera? Exactly, because what we're going to do, so why would we do this? And that's because later on when we're starting to develop our objectives, we might we will drop back into the SWOT analysis and see, oh, are there opportunities that we can take out? Are there threats that we need to mitigate? Mm. Uh, those sorts of things. So we're going to be using this SWOT analysis as we move forward. Step three. Step three, stakeholder, stakeholder analysis. So stakeholders are really, we're talking about those people who will be successful as a result of our success and vice versa. So we may have the same customer but a different focus. So if we're talking about an organisation, if you're in a finance team, you know, one of your stakeholders could be HR or it could be uh, a business unit that IT, you support yeah. Yeah, or IT, that's yeah. right. And so with stakeholder analysis, as you mentioned, what is the impact? 
impact and the importance of these particular stakeholders. And what you're doing is you're build, building up this relationship map of people in your organisation. And this is where an offshoot of a team building activity could actually come in, you know, where you actually look at key stakeholders and see what what do you think they're saying about you now? What would you like them to say about you? <laughs> so we've been in a workshop where we've done that before and we've said, okay, so if we had your key stakeholders here, what do you think they'd say about you? And so the team would say, we well, we think they'd say this. And we say, well, we just have to Oh, yeah, have we that. did, we did. We got feedback, <laughs> so, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. So you could actually physically bring the brave stakeholder in or you could collect this information prior to the workshop and have a bit of a reveal so there are just so many tangents and it and wasn't and it wasn't too oh, harsh no no yeah, no it was it enough was to wake them up no. go, oh <laughs> yeah that's right yes forgot about that all right step four is team purpose and we have covered this in previous episodes and this is answering the question what do we do for whom and why that's like, right and what it's doing is again it's providing you with a common direction it defines you know and sets the framework for the team and how we don't it actually operates, so it's almost like a guiding, um, a guidepost for you. Yeah, and which moves us into step five, which are team values. Again, values are what is important for this team. So we're looking from a behavioural, cultural perspective or a lens. That's right. So what are what are the values or the behaviours that are going to guide the way that we make decisions and how we interact with each other that everybody agrees to and could sign up for? In order for us to act on our or set be our objectives yeah, yeah. and be successful that's right. so that's so set six is setting the objectives you know so what do we want to have achieved by the end of a period or a time frame that's right and we always encourage people to use the smart framework specific measurable agreed with a time frame so the more specificity you have the more clarity that all the team members uh, will have in terms of oh okay wow we have to do all of that by june so the implication for me is blah 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 so the more you know specific you can be the um the easier it's going to be to cascade it throughout the team yeah and if you can't be specific because you're waiting for the financials or or um any information from other sectors just put a time frame on it or, or try and be as specific as you actually can. Mm. The other thing with the about with the objectives, Michelle, is the areas mm. of the objectives. Mm. So it could be a um, a balanced scorecard approach where you have, you know, financial finance, people, customer, yeah, uh, people and process yeah. or technology or innovation. It depends on what your organisation actually focuses on. Mm. So just be mindful of that. And if you're running a team session, you could actually separate right. those people so you separate the groups into four corners and then you get them to move around and see what um, different people come up with Hmm. because you don't want group think Hmm. you actually want um, people to work independently and together that's right and this this could be a perfect opportunity to bring stakeholders in if there are objectives that directly affect them or impact them so they get in from the ground floor yes and and when you are working on your objectives think about your success factors what has to go right in order for us to achieve these objectives and what are the potential barriers and how can we mitigate them what do we need to do who do we need to get on board or on side yeah so step seven yeah so what resources and support uh, is needed for each of the objectives so quite often what we'll do is we'll set the objectives but we don't really you know, follow it all the way through in terms of, so what actual resources, is it time, money, um, other people's efforts, is it IT spend, what is it, what are the resources that we need, is it other people, um, and support that we need in order to achieve this objective. So this could have not only the, the task element, but the people element, you know, who do we need to get on board in order to, you know, to achieve this objective. And this is where the people manager the people leader might have different resources that they need than other people in the team so it's it's a it's a really good indicator of the diversity Mm. of the team and what they actually need step eight yeah so this is really just a rounding out really and it's asking the question so what are we doing now that's not in the plan because each year teams just add more and more and more to the plan 
and forget about the stuff that they're doing from a, on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. And what do we need to let go of? Absolutely. So this is really the shoring up of the plan, yep. making sure that it is balanced and achievable. That's right. So putting a, an, an, another focus or lens That's on right. top of the plan. Yep. Step nine. Step nine is creating a bit of a timeline. And, cre- and it, it's almost like a calendar or a timeline so that you can actually map out where do each of these objectives fall in the course of a calendar year? Because if they're all in July, then you've got some issues. Yeah. And it is about, again, creating balance and perspective. It, it's so much easier to do it when you actually put it onto a timeline. Totally. You can yeah. identify those critical points, yeah. milestones. see milestones, yeah. and understand how that's going to impact other areas of the business and what's falling through because some businesses may have certain conferences some people may need to do board papers at certain times so just understanding that overview and and the beauty of this is that i've seen teams take this to the next level on a timeline because what they do is not only map out when each of the objectives fall but who are the stakeholders that are heavily involved in the delivery of that objective and what are their critical exactly and then you take that to the stakeholder and show them could be IT or finance, whoever, and show them where you're going to need their support. So again, you're creating better relationships within the organisation. Yeah, and, getting and it's done. meaningful oh, relationships. Because yeah. you know when we talk uh, to oh. people about you know networking and yeah. broadening your base, it's like, what, do I just have a coffee, coffee with them? Oh, yeah. It has to be, you have to identify what's important to them mm. and to deliver on that. Mm. And I think this is a really mm. good way of doing something practical, tangible, useful. Yeah, for, for everyone. Yeah. And step 10. Yeah. So this is about monitoring. So how do we keep this plan alive? How do we follow up? How do we ensure that we don't create a, uh, you know, a document that just sits in a drawer somewhere? How do we use this in a practical way so that we're successful as a team? So, for example, some people might say, okay, on our agenda item, we're always going to touch base on our team plan and see where we're on track and off track. Or we might have a look at certain key steps in the plan. So it could be stakeholders, it could be resourcing, and then focus on that in the team agenda. Uh, We might keep the plan alive by actually physically putting it up um, you know, like in a shared... Yeah, and then you could have a red, amber, green um, approach. So of the objectives that we've got, which ones are uh, doing really well? So you'd put a green light next to that. Which ones are faltering a little bit? That's your amber. And which ones are not hitting target? That's where you'd have a red. And then you'd start to focus. So why? What do we need to do about that? Invite the one-up manager every quarter to attend a team meeting so you can take them through the plan. Mm. That's another way that you can Mm. do it, actually diarising those events. So Mm. they're ways that you keep the plan alive, you Mm. follow it up and you keep monitoring your process. And the team will definitely come up with some great ideas for this on how to keep it alive. So involve them in that. Ask the questions, how do we keep this alive? How do we make sure that this junk doesn't sit in a drawer somewhere and we don't use it? Yeah, And, and... we have also, you know, got a one pager where you have all those components together. So stay in touch and we'll, you know, create that as we, you know, move along. But wouldn't it be incredible if every team in an organisation did a team-based plan? Oh, you would start to see amazing changes. Yeah, because amazing people are aligned. Changes. You know, yeah. like when your thoughts, actions, words, behaviours are in alignment, that's mm. when you have the you know the greatest power and impact. And this is you know it's such a useful, practical tool that every people leader, um, I think, needs to be able to to master. Oh, it's a skill. Yeah, and, you know, we talk about setting goals in your personal life and create. That's how you create success. That's what you doing as a team Mm. we're creating a vision Mm. and a plan for how to do that um you know as that chinese proverb says you know if you want uh one year of prosperity prosperity you grow grain and if you want 10 years of prosperity you grow trees and that's what we're doing here great (laughs) okay i was thinking oh how would i finish that spinach grow spinach (laughs) okay till next time okay bye We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the People Leaders Podcast. 
For show notes and other resources, please visit us at peopleleaderspodcast.com. While you're there, you can subscribe for future episodes so you can continue your own leadership journey. And please be sure to share this and other episodes with your friends and colleagues. The People Leaders Podcast is brought to you by the Experts on Air Podcast Network.